All right, a little tip for you. When it comes to creating the dimensions and text and text with leaders, I dimension the drawing first. The reason why I dimension the drawing first is the dimension has to go where it's going to go. You can manipulate the text or dimension, sorry, manipulate the text or the text with the leader after dimensions are in there. I'll show you why here. I need to put a dimension to d determine the width of this or depth. Since this is the right view, this is the length or depth of the part. If I grab this line and come down here, click a position, I had to work around all this stuff to get my dimension there. So if I try and drag this to the top, a couple things happens. You notice when I drag it to the top, I have no gaps. So I can't just drag it to the top like that. I'm going to delete this and create another dimension. Under Dimensions, in the Annotation tab here, you hit a dimension. You click Line, drag it up. Well, this is in the way. Okay. So what I would have done was delete this out, create this dimension, place it where it needs to go, so let's view our grid so we can place it three quarters, uh, three eighths to a half inch off the part. And that looks like a quarter inch. This would be about a half inch over here. Okay. Now, another thing I could do is go to frame. Move the part, uh, you have to go to this one here, move this part so it lands on the grid or pretty close to it. Then if you're working off a grid, it's just going to be a little easier to manipulate when I'm putting all my dimensions and such. Sometimes it doesn't work so great trying to get it to the grid. It appears the grid keeps shifting here, but we can use that grid to kind of help us gauge. I know these are quarter inch increments. So right below this line would be a quarter inch. So right below this line would be a half inch, and that's close enough. All right. Now that I've had to move the text, I've got to put it back on. What I would have done is copy pasted that text into there so if I delete I would have copied it first now come in here and put that tech leader over here and paste that oh shoot I don't know why I did that I'm gonna undo the deletion of this thing double click on it and copy that cancel delete this out I can move this text to approximately where it needs to go. Go to your text leader and re-put this in here. I'm going to turn the grid off just to make it easier for me to see. Turn the frame off too. And paste that name in there. And now I have my dimension. You're going to click on it right click and go to properties we go to properties I'm looking for dimension value uh, that's a value tab on the top When you find the value tab on the top, you want to change feet and inches to numdink. Select OK. All right. Take a look at figure 9-1 in your print reading book. That will be found in lesson number 9 where it talks about creating dimensions. It will be the first picture in the chapter called... Uh, uh, it will be the first picture in the Unit 9 chapter 
called Dimensioning. Chapter 9 is called Dimensioning. Figure 9-1 will be the first picture where it identifies the horizontal line being a dimension line. This vertical line being an extension line. The arrow is known as a symbol. The gap is known as the blanking or gap. And that's the distance from the extension line to the part. This line here that goes past the symbol, past the arrowhead, is called the overrun. Any, or any text before or after this is called dimension text. The 5.0 itself is called a value. Why it's important to know that? Well, if you go to your legacy preferences, You want to be in the drafting tab. All these tabs are significant. So for the drafting tab, you want to be in ANSI ASME. Okay, those are your choices, but we're using ANSI ASME standards, which are very similar. Under general, we want to make sure that we're tabbed to inches. Under display, we want to have all these parameters show. Under view, Right here where it says default break line gap, that should be 0.2, that's fine. Under generation, this is where a lot of people get thrown. The first two says to disable automatic update. It used to be automatic update and you turned it on. This seems goofy to me because you have to turn this on to turn off automatic updates. This turns off the automatic updates, but I want automatic updates to happen. So I leave those off. I have those disabled. I'm going to select geometry. I generally like to set a primary spacing of one inch and a graduation of four. If that's too much, you could change your graduation to 10 so it won't jump so much. But I'm good with the four. Um, plus, it makes the grid that much tighter looking when you have it on. Under dimensions, you see the default gap between the dimensions and the default offset reference. Okay, this default offset reference would be nice if it were 3 eighths to a half inch automatically. Um, default offset between dimensions. According to the book, if you look at the dimensions, it says a quarter inch or more. So we can make a quarter inch and adjust accordingly after the fact. So I'll change that to 2.5. Whoa. 0.25. Oh, it's not letting me do anything. Okay, so I finally got to edit to be 0.25 there. Um, under handles, when you get better at using Katia, you can turn all of these on, but when you're new, these are just kind of annoying and in the way. I would have them on for the modification, though. This allows us to modify text to add an insert after or move the text or change our blanking and such. Okay. Under annotation, uh, I think that's it. What I want to show here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save those changes by hitting OK. All right, I'm going to click on this dimension, right click, and go to properties. <coughs> Under properties, we are at the value tab, and all those properties look good. We've set that to numdink. We don't have any tolerances. Uh, for this, everything looks good. I do want two symbols because I want the symbol on both sides, and that's why symbols is checked on. Extension line, that is this vertical line here. So knowing that 
this means extension line this would be the appropriate place to change my blanking so according to the book the blanking is 1 16th of an inch now you used to be able to type in 1 divided by 16 now it doesn't let you so that's 0 0.0625 hit tab how do I know that if you take a calculator up and you do 1 divided by 16 you see it says 1 divided by 16 is 0 0.0625 So I'll change that blanking. Oh, by the way, let me hit OK to that. I'll try and move this and turn that back on. Click on this, right click on that, and go back to properties. So we were at dimensions. Dang it. If I change this to 0.2 and hit tab and hit apply, see the one on the left is the one that moved and the one on the right did not change so again that should be at 0 0.0625 on both sides and the overrun if you look at your book on figure 9-1 it says that should be 1 8 of an inch so my overrun should be at 0 0.125 I hit apply and it's I think so close you can't really tell just to show you make it obvious I'll do point five and hit tab and hit apply you see how this went way over okay so again according to the book this should be point one two five and the one on the right should also be point one two five and hit apply select dimension text this is where you can add text before, after, over, or underneath the values. For font, this is where we can change our line fonts and heights. This is changing the text that's either before, after, or above, or underneath of it. This is changing the color and the thickness. Okay we should just leave it at the default thickness which should be the thinnest one available you can actually identify these dimensions but no one really does that okay and we could change the name here again so I select OK so the reason I want you to be familiar with 9-1 it identifies what all these elements are if you understand what the elements are you'll understand what to go modify or what tabs to look for to change whatever it is you're trying to change. That's not true with just Katia or 3D Experience. That would be the same for SolidWorks, AutoCAD, Rhino, uh, uh, Param 3D. There's, there's tons of CAD systems out there. But if you understand those dimensions, they all, for the most part, have the same kind of naming conventions and the same kind of parameters you can edit. All right, that's my demo for creating dimensions.